Hello guys, what's up? This is Dalton Pope with DMP Productions here. I'm bringing you an After Effects tutorial on how to do a disappearing effect. Now, before we start, this is not my original idea. This idea came from Film Riot, and I put my little twist on it. If you guys have never heard of Film Riot before, check out their channel. I'll leave it in the description below. Film Riot is where I've learned most of my special effects techniques and gave me the inspiration to become a filmmaker myself. So thank you guys. Film Riot, you guys are amazing if you're watching this video. If you haven't checked them out, links in the description below. Now, let's go ahead and enough with the chit chatter and enough with the crying tears. Let's go ahead and get into this bad boy. So now you're going to need two clips. You're going to need one clip being your green screen footage. Um, there's me. <laughs> I'm meditating like a nun. I, I mean a monk. I didn't say nun. Okay, so anyway, we have our green screen footage and we have our clean plate which is basically you want to get a video uh, on a tripod of your background. Now as long as it's on a tripod and it does not move, your background will be fine. Now if you don't have the access of getting a good background, then what you can do is go on Google Images and find an image off of Google Images. So now before we start the effect, here's what it's going to look like as a final product. I'll watch it again. Now we have the disappearing effect along with a uh, slight discoloration and kind of a sprawled out blur. So let's go ahead and get started. Open up After Effects. Go ahead and drop in those two clips into your After Effects software. Go ahead and drag them down into the Live View window. So now we'll go ahead and mark off where we want to start the video. I'll start it right there. So now, click on your top footage, and if you want to do a shortcut, a keyboard shortcut to cut clips down, hold down the Alt key and the open parenthesis or open bracket, and that will cut your clip down to where the play marker is at. So now, what we want to do now is go ahead and find where we want the effect to happen. This will just be an extra step that we don't have to do. We'll start right there. So now, since we have that there, we're going to go ahead and key out the green screen. So now we're going to make sure our top layer, our green screen layer is highlighted. Go down to Effects, Keying, and Key Light. Now, Key Light is automatically included in your plugins. You don't have to purchase any third party plugins. So go ahead and open up Key Light, click on the eyedropper, pick the brightest spot in the green screen. And you're probably looking at that right now and going, wow, that's actually a really good key. There's nothing in the background that's. There's no fractals or anything that's very obvious. Well, if you look here, there's a little bit of blur on the house. And if you don't see what I mean, go down to Final Result and Screen Map. Now, we can see that there is a lot of uh, noise in the background. And we want to get rid of this noise, and I'm going to show you how. Go down to Screen Grain, uh, Screen Grain, Screen Gain, whatever you want to call it. And you're going to increase the screen gain until we get this little patch or just whenever you start getting rid of it. Now you don't want to increase it too much or you're going to start seeing a difference in the character itself. So you want to go ahead and just fix it up until you get that. So now go down to your screen mat settings, clip black and get rid of the rest of that fractal and clip white you want to minimize that and you want to get this character white if you don't know this already you want your character that you want in front of the green screen to be completely white and you want your green screen to be completely black so now I'm pretty sure that is a great key right there so go down back down the screen mat go back to final result and you look at it and it looks really really good so now Next thing we're going to do is, this is just a nitpick of mine, we're going to color correct it because I look completely outmatched for my background. So we're going to go to the effects and presets search bar, type in the word curves, go down to color correction curves, drop that on your green screen layer. And if you have never, this, this is your newest time going on to After Effects, this is the curves um, plugin and basically what it is is you have three points of intersection with this grid. You have the highlights which will change highlights, midtones which is midtones and low which are shadows. So now if you watch and observe I'll bring this down and you can see that my body starts to turn whichever way I want. If I go high I get brighter, if I go low then I get lower and darker. So now we're going to key it down to I look pretty matched up. I think that looks good right about there and then we're going to take our shadow and we're going to drop it down just a little bit 
We're going to take our mid tones and we're going to boost that down just a tad. Now, that's a pretty good color correction. Now, I'm very nitpicky about that, but if you're still beginning with this, don't worry about it. If you want to try it, you can. You can copy my settings if it's sort of like that, but it's going to be more of your thing to experiment to get the look that you want. So now we're done with color correction. Let's go ahead and get onto the effect. Go down to layer, new, solid. Make sure it is a complete black solid. Go down to effect, noise and grain, and fractal noise. Now you should be having a screen that looks just like mine. It looks very noisy and grainy and that's what we want. So now this is the, we've already set where we want our uh, time indicator to be. So let's go ahead and click on the keyframes of contrast, brightness, and evolution. Now before we do any movements, let's go ahead and turn up the contrast and turn up the brightness. What we want is a pure white screen. We want to start with the white screen. We're going to go forward four frames. We are going to turn up the contrast and down the brightness until you start seeing black smudges. And we're going to go down one revolution, or go up one revolution. Then you're going to fast forward five frames. You're going to turn down the brightness even more to where it's more present. And we can do two revolutions, which, which will be pretty good. And then you're going to go for another five frames, and you're going to take down the brightness to where only you see white specks. You do one more revolution, and then four frames later, you're going to down the brightness all the way until it is a complete black screen, and don't forget to include that last revolution. So now you should have an effect that looks just like this. Pretty cool, right? But you're going, how does that apply to my disappearing? Now, if you have a menu that looks like this, you want to go down to toggle switches and modes, and this will pull up the modes and track mats and parents. Basically what you want to do is go down to your track mat, go to your green screen layer, click on luma mat, and you will be able to see your character. Now. If we render this out, you will see that my body starts to disappear, kind of like what the fractals were doing, what we were messing. So now let's view that in real time. That looks really, really, really cool. Now, you're probably going, okay, that's a pretty cool disappear effect. I can run with that. Of course you can run with that. That's your decision. But I decide to make it just a little bit better. Now, before we go on, this entire disappearing idea, like I said, if you guys forgotten, Film Riot, this is not my idea. Don't spam the comment section saying, Film Riot already did this. Well, Film Riot did do this. So from here on out, this is my way of doing it. Let's do it. So, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to fast forward until you start seeing the disappearing effect, which I start seeing it right here. So you're going to go one, two, three frames back from the disappearing. You're going to go back over here to your effects and presets, and you're going to type in the word CC Radial Fast Blur. Okay. So now we have our CC Radial Fast Blur. We're going to drop that on our green screen footage. We're going to click keyframe the amount, set it down to zero. Go down one, two, three, four frames, and we're going to set the intensity to about... 60 around 60 it doesn't have to be perfect 60 but around 60 now go to where the middle of the effect happens to be which I think that's about the middle of the effect and I'm gonna blur it out until that looks good right there so now I went from 50 to 96 59 to 96 so now, as you can see, in that drastic chain, what it looks like, instead of me just sitting there and I kind of just etchy, you know, disintegrate in thin air, I'm actually spreading the disintegration out to make it look like I'm actually evaporating into thin air. That looks a lot smoother and tends to be it looks a lot better. So now scroll down here and go to the, your effects tab and this will help you look a little bit more smoother go down to where you have your amount keyframes for your CC radial fast blur right click on it keyframe and easy ease this will make it to where it's a lot smoother of a transition between the keyframes and if you guys want to you can go down to your black solid and go down to your fractal noise and do the exact same thing which I'm going to do because I'm a professional 
Now, after we get done setting the keyframes for that, we're going to apply one more effect. Let me find the point where I start disappearing, which is right here. One, two, three, four. Go back four keyframes. Go back to your effects and presets search bar, and you're going to type in the word glow. And once you find glow, you're going to click on stylize glow, drop it down onto your green screen as well. You're going to go to glow threshold, radius, and intensity, set the keyframes, and we're going to go ahead and increase the glow threshold to 100. Now you're going to fast forward those keyframes three times, three or four times, I'll do three. Now I'm going to set the glow threshold down until I start seeing a color disorient. Now I'm going to click glow radius, and increase it to about 50, and glow intensity to about 1.6. So now we're going to fast forward into the point where I fully disperse, which is probably about right here. And I'm going to take down the glow intensity to where it looks like I have a white beam of light. And boom. So now if we watch the my view, it looks like my body is burning and then disintegrating or evaporating in thin air, which I think looks pretty darn cool because it's just more of an additive touch on my end. So one more time, and that is the rendered look. So that is the full disappearing effect. Now I'm going to give you one more for you guys today before we leave. Go ahead and highlight all of your selections in your live view. Control Shift C, and you can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to leave it pre-comp. And what you're going to do now is you're going to click the P on P key on your keyboard and that'll bring up the position tab on the pre-comp. You're going to hold down the alt key, click on the stopwatch and that'll bring up your expression for the position. You're going to delete what's in that expression box and you're going to type in this expression. Type in exactly as I do, you're going to type in the word wiggle, space, open parenthesis, two, comma, 15, close parenthesis, and click away. Before you can render that out, go back down to your scale, go down to transform, scale, and type in 103, and since it's linked, it's going to be 103 to 103, scale ratio. So now, you are completely done with the effect. Basically what this does is it adds a screen shape, a camera handheld shape to it. And that kind of hides in the seam of, okay, this looks like he's on green screen. And this looks like this is a background. And it adds more depth to it because nothing is ever still in life. So it looks pretty kind of boring if it's just a still shot. But if we have camera motion, it looks very intriguing. So that is the effect for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys have an effect that you guys want me to do, leave it in the comment section below and I will get up on that. If you like this video, leave a like, share it with all your friends on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Tumblr, Pinterest, whatever you kids are into these days. And again, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you have not done already for the new video content that is posted up weekly. So thank you guys so much for watching. This is Dalton Pope with DMP Productions, and I will see you later. Hey you, you see that subscribe button at the top right part of the screen? I suggest clicking that so that way you be subscribed for the more video content and news that DMP Productions has to offer you. That's right.